Hello and welcome to the video. This is a bit of advanced OpenTX stuff for a Patreon of mine called uh, Gerard. Now Gerard has a glider that he likes to launch and he's looking to be able to do everything on a timer. So what he's after is to be able to kind of um, flick a switch, have a two second delay, then full power and a bit of elevator to take it up into the air. Then after about seven seconds for that elevator to switch, to push the nose over so it's flying straight and level, then kind of have a bit of rudder right and power everything down so he can take control. So here's the outputs here. This is the throttle. That's the aileron, a little bit of rudder as well. So I'm going to start it. Watch what we're doing here. It shows you on the screen. We're in normal flight mode. So we, we hit the switch, we get a two second delay for the countdown, then we're in launch. You see the elevators change a little bit. We have 100% throttle after seven seconds, then it, we level out. So the elevator goes the other way and then it all goes back to normal mode and now we can fly. Now, there are many ways as with all things in Edge and OpenTX, there are as many ways as you can think of to actually achieve this. Let me show you how I've done it. So the first thing is we need to figure out where we can actually do things with timers. And that is always going to be in here in logical switches. We can not only set the duration that something is on, we can also set the delay. So here are four things that's going to act as the timers. They don't all start the same time. They well, they actually start at the same time, but in terms of their action, their actions are delayed. So they work in a cascade. So if I simulate this, this is logical switches one to four. Uh, if you just ignore what it says on the screen and all the stuff going on down here, let's just watch what happens with the logical switches. It's these bank of four. So we're back in normal mode. And occasionally, uh, OpenTX Companion does some weird stuff. So occasionally you have to kind of go trigger it once, but don't worry about that. Things like this, I would always test it on the bench and I would always test it with the latest version of OpenTX. This is the kind of stuff that so few pilots use. You can occasionally bump into a bug. So watch what happens at the moment. Non-logical switches are on. As I flick SG, logical switch one comes on for two seconds. Logical switch two comes on for seven seconds, which is the launch phase then we get a couple of seconds of it leveling out, then we get a couple of seconds of it throttling down and going to the right, and then we're back into normal mode. So it's the logical switches, thanks to the fact that what we have now is these timers running, and these are the timers that we're going to use to sequence all of that in OpenTX. Now you can see that the switch I've decided to use that triggers all of these is SG, and I've just put max, which just removes the, um, the the variable, the parameter from having to do with any control or anything else on the radio. I've just put those 100% just to make this all work. So now when I sw flick switch SG, I'm going to have those four things, these four logical switches go bump, 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 bump. And we can use those to change stuff. Now, what I'm doing to put the stuff on the screen so it actually tells you what's going on, which I really quite like. I like the fact that the radio will tell you on the screen what's going on. You can also use the logical switches to do some kind of announcement on the radio as well. I'm using flight modes. Now, I find flight modes for things like this incredibly handy. Now, there are flight, flight modes set up for normal mode, which is the normal one that's defaulted to. You can't put a switch on here, so this is the one that is going to fall back to. And then we have the flight modes in order that this picture on is asking for. So we have flight mode one, which is the countdown, which is two seconds. Then the launch, which is a seconds, seven second climb with a bit of elevator. Then we have flight mode three, which is level out, which is where the motor is still going at 100%, but the elevator switches direction to push the nose down. And then we have flight mode four, which is a right hand turn, which also throttles back as well. So what we're going to do is we actually start off in normal mode and as the logical switches come in, so logical switch one is going to turn on flight mode one for the countdown, then logical switch two is going to turn on flight mode two, and then flight mode three and flight mode four are turned on by logical switches three and four. With me so far? Now the reason that I'm using these is this is where we can get into some funky stuff. 
So in the inputs, nothing's really changed, standard inputs. It's the mixes where we've done it. Now this looks horrendous, but don't worry, we'll go through each of this stuff. Now there's only one flight mode that the rudder is affected in. And the way he wants it is he wants a right hand turn. So this is flight mode four. So guess what? In the mixes, if we look at this, we have this, and just a name to keep track of it. We're using that magic max again, uh, because we can just then set any value we want here. Uh, we could actually be clever and set valuable values from the global variables, but I don't want to overcomplicate this. So I'm just saying that the rudder needs to move in 10% of its movement, or well, it's actually 5% of the movement, but 10 in whichever direction we could change the direction of the rudder we could also change the amount of rudder that you want it can all be done by just changing this number because it's max uh, it will use this hard number we are only having this activate in flight mode 4 and flight mode 4 again as we just looked at is the right hand turn so basically what we're saying is add this little bit of movement onto the rudder when you are in flight mode four only and this allows us to very finely control what's coming in and out at each point the only other thing that i've done is i have added a safety switch because once you have started this process it's just going to run you need a way to turn it off and that is by using the momentary switch by adding it in here let me show you why i've added I did that. So here we go. The process has started. The motor starts. No, 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 I don't want to do that. By pulling SH, even though the process is still continuing, it means that we don't get any of the stuff. You can kind of just hold that safety switch until it goes back to normal and then you're kind of safe again. So I would always add with something like this an additional switch on anything you add into the mixes so that you can essentially have an oh dear switch to stop it going through this automated process. Because once it started, you've kind of committed yourself, but SH is gonna save us from that. So that's how the rudder works, pretty easy stuff. Elevator is a little bit more complicated because we want the elevator to do two different things. We want it to climb initially, and we want it to climb during the launch phase. And this is the cool thing about flight mode. You see, it's actually copied the name automatically of whatever we call the flight mode, right? You can see it has actually come through in the mixes. So it's almost, you can kind of read it like English. So the first one is the elevator. So this in flight mode two, which is the climb. Again, we're using max. We're setting the elevator to the position that we want and we have added that safety switch in here as well. So that means that the elevator for, flight for launch is um, going to be at this value. Then in flight mode three, it's going to change. And that's because in flight mode three, this is the one that he wants to nose over in and level out. So flight mode three, we want the elevator to go in the opposite direction. So what we've done is, surprise, surprise, we've set the elevator value to whatever we want, and then we have added that safety switch, and it only operates in the level out bit. Throttle, pretty much the same. What we've done is we have added a couple of things. However, the maximum throttle is set for uh, both the launch and the level out phase. So we can actually select multiple flight modes. Again, this is a really handy part. So this time I've actually set replace as the multiplex because I just want it to give me 100% throttle, not bothered about what the throttle is doing already. So the source is max again, 100% throttle. We're only gonna do it in the launch. If I just move this aside, the launch and level out flight modes are the two that we've got set. SH is there as a safety. I'd absolutely recommend you have that. If you're commanding a throttle to start on its own, you need a way to be able to stop it if something horrible happens. So that means that when you are in the launch, where it's climbing and the level out phase, and then the last one, we have another one, which is where it is going to start off with 100% throttle, but it's going to fade down. So it's going to happen slowly. So we can change the way that that all works. And using slow up and down means you can smooth the transitions. You can also smooth the transitions actually by having a fade in and a fade out. So for example, here on level three mode, what I've done, I've actually got a fade out. So 
that helps have a smoother move between each of the flight modes rather than have a hard click. So that is probably doing, to be fair, the throttle back. The only other thing that I've done in special functions, when logical switch one is on, logical switch one is the one that's going to turn on the countdown mode, which is the bit before the motor's going to start. It's the bit where the machine is incredibly dangerous because people around it might not realize it's about to do something automated. I would make it um, level one while logical switch one is on. Uh, give me the haptic and... Um, I basically repeat it for two seconds. So what this do, it's going to make the radio vibrate. I would also potentially set up other things in here, uh, maybe for logical switch one, maybe play a particular channel. So, you know, you can um, have it so that it's going to do that. Um, just so that when you initiate the whole process, the radio is going to warn you that something horrible is going to happen. So to recap very quickly, the key to this is logical switches allow you to sequence stuff. Once you've got that figured out and all working, then you can set up your flight modes to be the flight modes for each thing. And then once you've got your flight modes all set in the mixer, you can just kind of add in the bits that you need for the flight mode that you are interested in and work your way through it methodically. Again, personally, I would always make sure that you are testing all this stuff on the bench. And then when you need to, when you go to the field, you can kind of just go for it and have an awful lot of fun with this kind of automated stuff. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.